Uh, dear students, we have seen in the previous session. So what is the structure of the DNA? So based on that, we are going to solve certain questions which is related to the calculation part. Okay, first uh, questions that is then based on the length of the DNA. How to find out the length of the DNA? So this is an calculated part as well as this questions related to this concept. The questions will be asked in the NEET examinations. How to find out the length of the DNA? So what we say the length of the DNA, the length of DNA can be identified, can be calculated by knowing the number of base pair, number of base pair multiply with distance between two consecutive consecutive base pair two consecutive base pair okay so this is the formula to identify the length of the uh, dna okay length of the dna so examples let us see the question is given if the length the length of E. coli is 1.36 mm the question is given like this if the length of the E. coli is 1.36 mm so calculate the number of base pairs number of base pairs in your cell in your cell okay already we know that that 1 mm is equal to 10 to the power 3 okay so 1 nm is equal to 10 to the power minus 9 clear so the length we are going to apply the formula in this the length of the equal is 1.36 mm 1.36 mm so we do not they are what they are asking they are asking to find out the number of base pair so consider base pair is known not known so i have given that n okay so between the two consecutive base pair the distance will be 0 0.34 10 to the power minus 9 meters 10 to the power minus 9 meters okay so now i am going to find out the number of bases present in the cell so thereby what i am going to do it i will be writing 1.36 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 0 0.34 10 to the power minus 9 so when we do the calculations so we will get 4.6 10 to the power 6 base pair this is the answer got it clear fine so let's solve another questions the number of base pairs in human beings in deployed condition okay we are talking about the deployed conditions so human being human dna dna it is in deployed conditions is 6.6 .6, 10 to the power 9 base pair got it what is the length of the what is the length of human dna length of human dna what is the length of human dna so already we know the formula the length of dna is equal to number of base pairs multiply with distance between two consecutive base pairs okay so length the number of base pair is 6.6 .6, 10 to the power 9 base pair and then multiply with 0 0.34 10 to the power minus 9 meter okay 9 meters so what we are going to do it yes cancel am i right 
So we will get it at next one 6.6 into 0 0.34. So we will get 2 meter. The answer is 2 meter. So roughly it will come 2.2 meter. So the length of deployed human DNA is 2 meters. Got it? Okay, this is one type of questions. And another thing is, so another format, let us see. This is the second calculations. Let us see the third calculations. Already I told you, no. If the length of DNA, if the length of DNA has 25,000 base pair how many turn how many complete turn ok not incomplete complete turn will the DNA molecule take will the DNA molecule Take. It's a very easy question. If the length of the DNA has 25,000 base pairs, how many complete turn will the DNA molecule take? So one turn. So how many base pair one turn consists of? One turn has 10 base pair. Am I right? So what we are going to do? It? So 25,000 base pair divided by 10 base pair. So 0 0 cancel then we will get 2500 so the DNA should go, will, should, should go 2500 complete turn so 2500 turns got it clear fine that's good let's move on to the Charkov Erwin Charkov rule this is very important concept based on that you will get compulsory questions in the NEET exam. Okay. Erwin. Sarkov rule. Rule. Okay. So Erwin Sarkov rules. So it is implemented around 1950. Around 19. 50. So what he says, urine is equal to primitive. Okay, urine is equal to primitive. Whatever, irrespective of the sources in the DNA molecules, the urine is equal to primitives. Okay. The second one, what is that? So the fan that means uh, A. A is a purine and it is equal to primitive T. G uh, sorry. One N and so this is the way it is equal. Okay. So another one, the ratio, the ratio of ratio of AT is equal to GC. The ratio of I means AT by GC. So this is the rule. Clear. Got it? So these are the two, two things you have to keep it in your mind in order to solve the problems. First thing is in purine is always equal to the primitive irrespective of the sources in the DNA molecule. Next one, almost the ratio of AT is equal to the GC. It it's need not to be compulsory, totally equal ratio. Sometimes it may vary. So constant things is we call it an AT by divided by the GC. So this is the ratios we can keep it in our mind. So let's move on. Based on that, let us see certain questions. If we are double standard, 
double standard DNA DNA so we can write these things in short form DS DNA okay as 20 percentage of cytosine cytosine okay what is the percentage of adenine in it adenine in it if you have double standard DNA as 20 percent of cytosine and what is the percentage of adenine in it in the DNA molecules so what is cytosine how much percentage 20 percentage so now we are going to use it that always purine is always equal to primidine so G is equal to C that means if it is a 20 percentage and this also is a 20 percentage am I right clear got it so that means G plus C is equal to 40 percentage G is equal to G plus C is equal to 40 percentage then that means A plus T will be a 60 percentage A plus T will be a 60 percentage that means that A is equal to T A is equal to T if the suppose A is to 30 and uh, T also 30 percentage T also 30 percentage so first thing so thereby we can get it in G is 20 percentage G plus C is 40 percentage ok so remaining a t a plus t is equal to 60 percentage that means so a is equal to t so thereby 30 and 30 so 30 plus 30 so thereby adenine is 30 percentage adenine is 30 percentage got it clear if you are clear with the questions then you will easily solve the questions quickly as well as you will get the correct answer so let's say uh, one more question the second question 30 percentage of bases in a sample in a sample of DNA extracted from eukaryotic cell from eukaryotic cell is adenine is adenine so what is the percentage the percentage of cytosine in DNA molecules in DNA molecules ok so what they are saying 30 percentage of bases in a sample of DNA extracted from eukaryote cell is adenine. So the percentage of DNA, I mean adenine in DNA is 30 percentage. Okay, what is the percentage of cytosine in DNA molecules? Okay, now so adenine is in 30 percentage. Am I right? So they have told in the questions adenine is a 30 percentage. That means thymine also 30 percentage. Thymine also 30 percentage. So if adenine and thymine 30 30 then we are how going to use Erwin Charkov rules A plus T is equal to 30 plus 30 30 plus 30 so you will get 60 percentage you will get 60 percentage okay if A plus T is 60 percentage surely 
g plus c b 40 percentage so g plus c should be 40 percentage so already we know g always bind with c that means this g is a 20 percentage and cytosine is a 20 percentage got it so that the cytosine percentage is 20 thank you for watching my channel